for Mariners baseball on Roots Sports. And we begin the 2024 season. It's the Mariners and the Rockton Red Sox. It is a capacity crowd, as you would expect. A season of great anticipation for these Mariners. Welcome once again, Eric Goldsmith and Mike Flowers. Mike, you know what this day is like up in the booth. You know what this day is like down the field. This is as good as it gets. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? Drone on here with you. It's March 28th, Thursday, 2024. How's everybody doing out there today? It's going to be me in a solo call, but I got too much prep in this to throw it away. So let's do it. It's the Boston Red Sox and the Seattle Mariners. We're at T Mobile Park right now. I've got the 2024 MLB TV package redeemed because of T Mobile on that side. So I always think for the Hopkins for that. So it's the Boston Red Sox, 78-84. They were last in the AL East last year. They were 39-42, and 42, each splits between home and road. They're head coached by Alex Cora. Their lineup sounds like this today. Jaron Duran is going to play left. Rafael Devers in third. Trevor Story will bat third, playing shortstop. Tristan Koss is clean up at first base. Talor O'Neill in right field. Matsutaka Yoshida will be the DH batting six. Sinadine Rafaela will be the center fielder batting right. Emmanuel Valdez, eighth, and Connor Wong, ninth, will be catching today. Valdez will be at second. Brian Bayo will be the starter for the Boston Red Sox. And for the Seattle Mariners, Luis Castillo is on the mound for opening day. We got to see the Fireballer the last couple of years. They're head coached by Scott Service. They're 88 and 74 last year, two games from the AL West. They missed the postseason. J.P. Crawford in short batting left. Julio Rodriguez in center. Jorge Polanco second base. Mitch Garver the D.H. Cal Raleigh the catcher batting fifth. Mitch Hanniger in right field batting sixth. Dominic Canzone in left. Ty France at first and Josh Rojas seven eight nine respectively. Rojas will play third today. So I want to know honestly in the YouTube question. What do you guys think of the Seattle Mariners this year? I know Draft Neck, uh, Mark is one of those guys on YouTube that does a lot of the MLB stuff on um, there. And he's got them going all the way to the World Series, losing to the Dodgers, or the Atlanta Braves, I should say, as it's going to be the Braves-Dodgers in the NL side. And then the American League should be the Mariners mixed in with maybe Texas or Houston. Yeah, them going all the way to the World Series. I do think we do see the Mariners in the wild card this year. I do think they get the postseason ball. I even think they'll probably win around on that side. It was difficult last year. They went through that summer stretch where Julio Rodriguez was essentially a pitching machine. He looked unstoppable, and the Mariners were red hot. Then when you got into the September-October side, they kind of slid – I asked Cooper Hopkins to join me in a couple of games, but he said it was too painful to watch his team slide. And I understand the way that that goes. But that's the kind of season it was for the Mariners. They were that close. You think when they trade Paul Seawolf, that she might kind of fall a little bit. But when they added Dominic Canzone and Josh Ross, they kind of went on a little bit of a run. Like we said, Julio Rodriguez was hotter than a firecracker. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the Mariners. I do have my reservations with the Boston Red Sox as far as what I think that they'll do this year. And we'll talk about that more as we go ahead. So let's get in the first pitch. And the fastball is just to the right and outside at 96, make a ball one against Duran. <clears throat> so for Duran, again, in 102 games, 295 average, eight bombs and 40 RBI. Jaron is one of those guys that has a ton of speed, 24 stolen bases, a 27-year-old. He's very solid all the way across the board. And for the Red Sox, I think this year is one of those ones where you want prospect development. The one more pitch. A splitter way down low. Make it 2-1. Again, in the mix for Castile, make sure I get this correctly. He features a four-seam slider sinker changeup. He tops around 98 miles an hour. He could press more. Opening day, you think these guys go at least six. Duran will sky one to left field. And it'll be a can of corn. No problem for Dom Canzone. This will go ahead and get the first out. So first out's underway, and the Seattle Mariners off to a good start with Castillo on the mound, but it's going to be Rafi Devers at his second. So for Devers, 271, 33 home runs, 100 RBI, 62 walks, 126 strikeouts. 
for the 27-year-old. I think for Devers, a little bit low on his numbers, and those already sound pretty exorbitant. He takes a fastball just outside of 96 up high. He's more a 290 hitter at his best, and he can get you about 115 ribbies, and that is no exaggeration. Another fastball. He does get the friendly call outside, so we'll see who is behind home plate. I'll get you those numbers there on the Roto-Wire side as we go along. We pull up the Seattle part of the box score so I can keep track of the fielders as Devers will slash a fastball down the third baseline, and that will go foul, make it one and two. 98 is the velocity for Luis already. One for six is Devers against Luis. Again, two American League teams, but one in the west and one in the east. The one-two pitch way up high. And Cal Raleigh will glove it and send it back for Luis. Three career seasons with 30 home runs and 100-plus RBI. So that's why I mentioned to you I think those numbers could be a little bit better. I know the Boston Red Sox might hover around 80 wins, but Devers is a huge part of that. He got blown away with the fastball at top of the zone, and Castillo notches the first K of his opening day. Nine pitches in and two outs. 27% strikeout rate and 22% average in Major League Baseball. So above average numbers for above average velocity. I know I watched Luis Castillo a lot with the Cincinnati Reds, but since just joining the Mariners over the last couple of seasons, he has been as advertised. Again, we used to talk about must-see JV with Justin Verlander a long time ago with the, Re with the Tigers. And it's kind of the same thing with Castillo. Watching those dreads fly and watching them pitch is definitely a treat. And this is something that the Boston Red Sox are going to want to walk into. Trevor Story, batting third today. Again, in 43 games last year, 203, three bombs, 14 RBI. He's played just 137 games in two seasons. As he takes a beautiful fastball, I'll call for a strike, right on the left side black, make it one and two. So, again, his opening day is there's not a seed to be had in-house. Castillo up ahead. He's trying to get this done with 13 pitches in the top of the first. That would be excellent for him. As we're taking a look at George Kirby, he's going to start tomorrow. 1-2 pitch for Story, 97. Up to the top left, makes it 2-2, two -two, well outside the strike zone, and Story will get a chance to dig back in again for Trevor. He's one of those guys for me that can hit 25-30. You think about the Coors Field Trevor story, and he's pretty good. Curveball, this one at 86. And he's fought off down the left field line. 219 strikeouts for Castillo. 197 innings pitched last season. Career high in innings pitched. And that's what Scott Service and company want to see, see a durable Castillo. He swung and missed on the fastball. And he points to the crowd and loves it. That's his signature. Two strikeouts out of three. And we're going to bottom one. Scoreless. You're so confident in the capability of our SUVs and the performance of our sedan that we offer a 10-year. So I'll pull up this box every vehicle in our line. on ESPN and try to get a little bit of uh, more clarity as we go along. Thank you for joining me on the opening day side. It's a little bit of a solo broadcast. Cooper Hopkins had some work obligations. Who knows? He might join sometime between the 8th and 9th. I doubt it, though. I think we're going to take this all the way through. Brian Bale will be up next against the top of the order as we're going to be going to the bottom first. Again, I got the MLB TV package courtesy of T-Mobile, so... As we hit in between this regular season, I know that he's messaged me knowing that he couldn't get to the game today, but he wants to take advantage of the MLB package, and I am too. I think we'll probably be covering a little bit more uh, Major League Baseball this year. Not to say that we don't normally do that anyway, but when it gets in the way between the hockey playoffs and everything else, we kind of key in on the puck side of it. But this will be a lot of fun to cover because I think even for me, for the Detroit Tigers this year, I think the Minnesota Twins are still the best team in the AL Central. However, I do think there's a possibility open for the Motor City Kitties to maybe make the postseason. I can't say that for certain, but I do think it could be there. I do think Seattle is going to be there when it's all said and done.
apart. Sell out crowd. Walkley Day against the Red Sox. JP Crosser comes in front of the bat. The other one from Lario. Six and two feet. Polanco and Garber. Mitch Hanniger, welcome back. He is in the right field. Ken Zell gets a nine in left. Zach Prance batting eighth of Rohan runs down the order. So Brian Bale, the fastball is outside, 96 to J.P. Crawford, long-tenured Seattle Mariner. Shortstop batting left today, and left today, and one of the situations for Crawford is he's always a left issue, so he isn't always in shortstop. He is one of those guys, one through nine, that can move up and down the order. Scott Service found his best luxury was having him lead off and get on base. He's very good at doing so. 86. Will miss down well. A three out count here for JP. For Bale. It's his first opening day. Again, he's a really good arm. And I think the Boston Red Sox strength is their pitching rotation this year is 95. Will bust Crawford inside, make a 3 1 in the top left of the box. But other than that, the Boston Red Sox are going to need some prospect development, as we said. I think it's going to be a tough year. I do think they get around the 80 win mark, maybe a little bit more, but the AL East is very difficult. Crawford thought he drew a walk. He was going for the shoelace ties and getting on first. It was close. That was outside the box, but now it's a full count. Julio is on deck. He's 0 for 4 against Bayo, but a 3 2 for Crawford. And a swing right to second base. No problem. We'll toss him out. Crawford should have been on base for the walk. But no problem on that side is Bale able to get the first out as Valdez makes the toss over. So 12 and 11 was Bale last year. 424 ERA. That's a little high. The whip is as well at 134, 45 walks, 132 strikeouts. But he is 24. A four seamer sinker cutter slider changeup at around 96. There is a lot to work with. Again, he's primarily, from what I'm looking at, the Root Sports Northwest side, a sinker pitcher. At 36%, and the changeup splits the plate at 87, and Julio does not swing at it. Can't throw that one again, as it's 32 home runs, 103 RBI last year for Julio. And he takes a grand cut and a changeup off the plate to make it 0-2. His 180 hits, 37 doubles, 32 home runs, 2 triples, 109 singles, 0-2. As quickly ahead was Bayo, but Cutter will go way outside, make it one and two. Connor Wong is behind the dish. It's going to be a split platoon, I believe, with Reese McGuire this year for the Boston Red Sox. Not a very powerful catching tandem, but nonetheless, that is what they have right now. One, two. Change up will bust Julio inside. Now make the count even at two and two. Strikeout rate for Julio Rodriguez, about 24% average, about 22. He does make contact with the ball. 88, this one splits the play. This slashes down the right field line. This is easily going to be a double as this is played in off the wall. And Julio has got a stand-up double to begin his season, and he definitely enjoys it. 62% win percentage all time for Seattle. But Julio gets a hit. That's a hell of a stat there by Root Sports. Thank you for that as this is a changeup that just caught every bit of the stitching in the middle of the plate. And it was another mistake. The first one, Julio didn't swing at that one. He just slashes down the right field line past Tyler O'Neill, who was the pickup from the St. Louis Cardinals after seven seasons. So that's a new face for the Seattle Mariners, the middle infielder, Jorge Polanco. He spent his entire career with the Minnesota Twins. And he is going to be a very good everyday infielder, this Jorge Polanco. At least that's my belief. 255 average, 14 home runs, 48 RBI, 36 walks, 88 strikeouts, 30-year-old. Two years left on his deal at $10 million per. And he's going to be an everyday middle infielder for Seattle. This is hit really well. And this will drop right in front of Tyler O'Neill. He somersaults to go ahead and make this throw to try to get it in quickly. So it's going to be Jorge Polanco at first with a solid single the right field. And Julio Rodriguez in a third. Again for Bale. It's a pitch that got right in the happy zone for Julio Rodriguez. Caught a lot of the plate and no problem there. 
trying to get a solid single in front of Teller O'Neill. So it is first and third with one out. Seattle's won 14 of their last 17 opening day games, so it always automatically kind of tells you that they can start off with a smile. I know the last end of their season didn't end that way, but, man, they were hot in the middle of summer. Mitch Garver picked up from the Texas Rangers, little DH. He's back in cleanup, and he's got ducks on the pond with runners in the corners. Pitch clock down to two. Bayo delivers 98. This one is top right corner, and this will be served right back to the fans. 19 home runs last season, all against righties for Mitch Garver, so same side damage. Cal Raleigh, should Garver reach, will be next. Garver takes 88 as this one misses up high with the changeup. Make it one and one. Against Seattle, opening the frame now with runners on first and third. Have a chance to do some damage very early at T-Mobile Park. Again, I love those signs for free MLB TV. Courtesy of T-Mobile, redeem it now. 88, again, that ends on April 1st. 2-1 now as he doesn't chase the slider. And Rich Garver ahead with the hitters count. 3-0-6 with runners in scoring position, 22-72. Last year, very good numbers. 34 RBI. Bayo, 2-1. This is a ground ball. This should be an easy turn. And Garver hits right into a double play. Bayo gets out of it after runners in first and third. So it is scoreless after one. I appreciate the likes on the YouTube side, ladies and gentlemen. Again, you can always get the clear audio on the Twitter space slash X side. Again, I looked at the uh, hockey thing from yesterday between the Tuesday, I should say, between the Red Wings and the Caps. And the video side was clear, although it didn't show up on the camera. I'm seeing it now. Everything should be good. There'll be a solo call here for me today. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through Friday as far as Gonzaga and uh, Purdue. We'll try to do it. I want to see how I feel. I think I'm going to do a little bit of a cold. I think I'm just going to get through it, though, as long as I'm not having too many problems right now. I got the cough drops in front of me. We are going to get this assignment done, no problem, and get the game story out. But I don't know about Friday yet. Monday, Tuesday, I will be streaming with you on the YouTube side because Friday and Saturday I will have Waterford Sharks playoff assignments. <clears throat> So let's check back into the play-by-play. -play. 96 way outside, bottom right, and Tristan Costas is down 0-1. As fastball inside now toward the legs for Tristan backs him off the dish. Again for Costas, another one of those good young players, 24 years old. It's a 26 pick in 2018 as Castillo delivers a changeup. Way outside, make it two and one. His OPS after the All Star break, a blistering 1,034, 24 home runs last season, which was second on the Red Sox in 2023. So Casas used his timeout. And then he'll get set to dig back into the plate. 263 average, 24 bombs, 65 RBI, 2 1 pitch, 95. And again, if you throw it just a little bit outside the plate right now toward the 
What's your say? Because Casas is a lefty toward the right-hand side of the lefties. I think you're going to get a call behind the dish today. That's what it definitely looks like. 85 on the changeup. No problem here for Ty. Nice little step on the back. Make it one up, one down. And again, as we said, the Tyler O'Neill product of the St. Louis Cardinals will be making his debut with the Boston Red Sox. He is in the middle of his deal. Again, 72 games played, seven years played in St. Louis. For Tyler O'Neill, who is a former Mariners prospect, thank you to Root Sports for that. He just has to stay healthy. That's really all there is to it. Again, for Tyler O'Neill, he's had his history for the Cardinals where he had 34 bombs and any RBI in 2021, but he just can't stay on the field. That's his only issue right now is availability. Other than that, if he's here, he's going to be able to do some damage. He played just 72 games last year, 231, nine home runs, 21 RBI. 2-0. And does not get the call on a pitch in the zone. Looked like a really good fastball. Maybe a sinker there at 95. Caught the black, and it's 3-0. and So Tyler O'Neill, we'll see if he wants to get nasty on this or just take an obligatory. He'll do so. 96 as he get the sound of the train. Again, Cooper always told me you hear that a lot in T-Mobile. So, again, I'm kind of used to some of the sights and sounds. Again, just filled with happy to cover this one here with you. John out here on the call. 96, and Teller O'Neill will draw a walk. He does have some speed, so that could come into play. Matsutaka Yoshida is the DH and left. He will be up next in the sixth spot. Yoshida's number is pretty good since coming over from Japan. It's his second season, but last year, 280, 15 bombs, 72 RBI. So Yoshida... It's like a 97 in. Again, it has my 289, 15, and 72. So I should take that 280 and just put a 9 in front of it. And I'll do so on my notes. Once we get another portion of the stoppage, make it 1 0. Tyler O'Neill with a cautious lead as the fastball will split the plate at 98. Make it 1 1. We got the Root Sports Northwest feed here. 276 two hard RBI, which is 14 out of 30 teams last year. Another 96 in the same spot, and Yoshida will look at it. Make it one and two. We'll see if Alex Cora wants to send Tyler O'Neill. Again, I would trust that Yoshida can make contact with the baseball. 186 hard hits, second amongst rookies. 89 is outside. Calderon tried to flame it, but to no avail on the changeup. Make it two and two. Some of those ones were, again, that was a ball, but closer outside the zone and the sinker that missed in that were called balls. So the strike zone consistency, we'll watch that today. O'Neill goes. Raleigh doesn't even frame a throw. So at least I feel good that I called that a little bit on that side to see if he would go. And Yoshida now, with a full count, he could be walked, or Castillo could punch him out. We'll see what happens, but at least the runner has advanced to his own accord. He draws the walk and steals a base. Good work for Tyler O'Neill. He's at second. 96. This is going to be Dominic Canzone, and it'll drop right into his glove. Right in the shallow left field. So O'Neill is right where he wanted to be anyway at second base, and then I'll leave it up to Sedane Raffaella. They said that he's had a pretty good spring, but his numbers last year in 28 games, so technically kind of a rookie, 23 years old from Curacao, 241. Plays everywhere, so he's known for his versatility, a little bit of speed. 31 pitches in the Castillo's day. 95 will go down the third baseline foul. 01 is the count against Rafael. Maybe another one of those guys that you want to look at. Maybe even uh, Marcelo Meyer on that end toward the end of the season as a call up. 88 busted him inside with the changeup, and he still offered at it. Did Rafaela make an 0 2? We'll see if Castillo can get out of this with 34 pitches, 30 and 41 record last season after the All Star break. It didn't matter where they were, the Boston Red Sox. 39 and 42 split between home and road. Runner on second is O'Neill. 
97 outside one and two against Rafaela. A little bit of an obligatory boo here from the crowd, but that was definitely a ball. 22% batter strikeout rate for just 12. So they will put the ball and play the Boston Red Sox. Another 97. And it'll take Raleigh out of his crouch. That's to count to two and two. Castillo trying to lock in right now and keep the damage to nil at this point. Again, Seattle had a chance to score in that bottom of the first, but Garver hitting a double play. 96. Punches him out right at the top of the black. And Rafaela is going to sit down. So Castillo will get out of it with the runner on second. And it's still scoreless as we go bottom two. So Castillo able to get out of the runner at second. And the Mariners will get set in the bottom of the second. It's going to be Cal Raleigh, Mitch Hanniger, and Dom Canzone do up five, six, and seven. Again, I'm sure Mitch Hanniger, if he didn't already get a, a standing ovation essentially during the opening day start at Team Mobile Park, will definitely get a good rouse of applause. I think when he's due up six as he makes his return to Seattle. I know Cooper Hopkins is happy about that. The first game of the season for the Cubs in Texas that at Globe Life Park is top 10. And Chicago begins with the runner at second, the extra inning rule. Over the last couple of years with the runner that starts at second, as it's tied at three apiece. We'll give you some MLB scores in a little bit. Got a lot to do here with uh, some NCAA basketball, some college hockey as well. <clears throat> So first pitch, Kyle Raleigh's going to offer at it, and the throw is wide at the first base side for Tristan Costas, and Cal Raleigh is going to go ahead and get on base as they welcome Nelson Cruz into the broadcast booth. He got a good ovation as well. He played with the Mariners between 2015 and 18, and he signed a one-day contract to retire as a Mariner on the night set, which is pretty cool. He's with Aaron Goldsmith and Mike Blowers on the Mariners' side of the broadcast, as it will go ahead and bring up Mitch Hanniger, who's in right field today. Again, he's made his return to the Mariners as well. 1-0 on the fastball inside from Bayo. Hanniger, 20 pitches in the Bayo's day. Again, you got 15 seconds to still deliver the pitch with runner on base at any point. Two seconds plus a little bit for runners off the plate. This is a jam job. And this will have to take Raleigh back to first. Luckily for him, he didn't take too many steps off the back. And Hanniger picks a pop out at the first base side. No problem for Casas. And it's one up, one down. It'll be Don Canzone now in left. 59 games play for Canzone. McCall, five bombs, 13 RBI, six walks, 24 strikeouts. He's 26 now, but I still think he's somebody that is going to be able to be watched a little bit. A little bit of a platoon for Canzo and Rojas as well. I still think they are capable players, and they'll be dependent on for Scott Service and company. 0-1 as he swings to the changeup to the right side of the box. 220 average for Dom last season. 0-1 pitch for Bayo. And this is a change up high. Make it one and one at 89. Again, for Bale, he was able to get out of uh, first and third 
As Garver hit into a double play, Julio Rodriguez was left at third. Could have been an easy sacrifice fly, but good pitch there for Bamville to get out of it. 96, top right box in the same spot as the changeup. Make it 2 1. As he'll grab the rosin bag and get all set. Bail rocking number 66. Again, as I said, I think that he is the best arm in the Red Sox rotation. But you could talk about Tanner Hawk, a few other pieces like that. Cutter Crawford, who's had some time as well, but he did get the opening day start today. 3 1. Ty France will be due up next. Unless there's a double play here. Can zone got the friendly hitters count at 3 1. We'll see what he does. 3 1 offers it a fastball. That was a good pitch for Bayo. Just enticing enough on the bottom right part of the black as the count's now full. Wouldn't imagine that Kyle Raleigh's threatening to run at all. He's going to short cautiously for Casas at first. And 88 swings right through the changeup. And Bayo. Able to set down Canzone, and they'll bring up Ty Franks for bat safe. So, John, here with you on the call. we got the Root Sports feed, courtesy of MLB TV. They are talking with Nelson Cruz, who signed his one-day contract to retire as a mayor. Some pretty cool opening day festivities in Seattle. We'll see what happens here with the righty, as 88's a perfect pitch. Top left side of the box. 0-1 on the changeup. See if he can get between this on 30 pitches. 250 last season for Ty in 158 games. So very dependable at first base. But anywhere in the infield where you should need him. Normally first and third. 99 just misses bottom part of that zone. As the chain continues to rattle around here for Ty, and he gets set to dig back in in the 1-1 one, one count. Kyle Raleigh at first with two outs. This is a changeup high, and this will be slammed down the first baseline foul. His career numbers against Bale are two for six. And Ty France, even though I think he should have a little bit more home runs than 12, just my opinion, he did have a lot of doubles last year, 30 certain. 25 plus doubles, three straight seasons, but he had 26 last year. He's always a threat to be in the 30s, as this is down the third baseline foul for Devers. And I'll set this back to Bale. And we'll start it again. Julio Rodriguez is showing him MLB record for hits in a four game span with 17. That was the pitching machine talk toward the first of uh, the inning that we were mentioning. Fastest player in team history to get the 50 career home runs. 1-2 count here for Ty France. Pitch number 31 gets spiked in the dirt, making 2-2. Two, two. Again, with Cal Raleigh, as you mentioned, he's going to be tailing to the first base bag, so really no hit and run when he is on the plate. Josh Rojas is going to bat ninth. He'll be playing third base today. He'll be next. 2-2 two, two count here for France. Strikeout rate is low at 17%. 98 way outside, and the count is full. This is the time now where you will get your running strike for Cal Raleigh. you got two outs, runner at first and a full count. You can get anything in the gap here. Could get close enough, at least get from first to third. Bay about to deliver pitch number 33. This is 96, followed straight back, and we'll do it again. John on here with you on the call. It's a solo one for me today. I couldn't be joined by Cooper Hopkins, which is unfortunate. However, we will give you this full one here. It is the Red Sox and Mariners on opening day. As I got the nightcap here for you. And then a game story to follow. The sports guy at WordPress.com. Pitch clock down to five. Here for Bam. As he gets set to deliver. And at 88, change up, bust him up inside. And Bale again. This time with a runner on first, and we'll still get out of it. Scoreless after two.
It ran a lot. A difference from day one. You know that feeling of having to rewash dishes that didn't get clean? I know. Cascade Platinum Plus has me doing dishes. Different. Scrub, soap, milk. I did straight, milk, and then. Platinum Plus is Cascade's best clean ever. The towel is on the double scrubber. You can remove the toughest grease and food rest for an irresistible clean and shine. Rewash. Then my house. Upgrade to Cascade Platinum Plus. Dare to dish differently. When a rookie stunt driver meets the truth, you thought he'd seen it all. Yeah, there's bound to be action. But this is no ordinary blockbuster. It's a Nissan sales event to have, so you better act fast. Don't miss your chance to drive away in a new Nissan. Draw me. Move me to the Nissan Thrill of the Drive sales event. Get 1.9% financing for 60 months, or get a low 299 per month lease on the 2023 Nissan Road. Valdez, Wong, and Duran will be set to go ahead and go 891 as we go to the top of third, still scoreless. Seattle with three hits. Boston doesn't have anything yet. Series continues all weekend right here at T-Mobile Park with three more games against the Red Sox tomorrow at 6:40. Saturday also at 6:40, and of course 1:10 on Sunday. You can lock in your tickets at Mariners.com and be here for all the action as the season gets underway. <laughs> So let's go top third. We got eight nine one due up here for the Red Sox. Manuel Valdez, Connor Wong, and Jaron Duran. As this will be Emmanuel playing second base, takes a strike. O one cap. Again, they're showing between the Seattle side and the scoreless between the Ducks and the Kraken. Let me give you the update there. I'm sure that's on there. Plus side of their broadcast. O two is the count now against Valdez. He hits the fastball. Just outside and gets the goal. Second all-time opening day match versus the Red Sox. Red Sox won the first match of 2-0 in 2000. 39th pitch as Castillo takes 96. 1-2 and two outside the zone, and Valdez will spit on it. Trying to get back into the count here. 2023 opening day that Cooper Hopkins and I covered. It was six innings, one hit baseball. And now that one hit was... In between the infield of the second base and Jorge Polanco and a diving Ty France, but it is a hit for Valdez, the first of the Red Sox season. He took 86 on a breaking ball down, and he just served it down the second base line and passed Mitch Haniger as well. 260 team average against righties last season, fourth in MLB. Uh, that's pretty good for a team that was 78 84 last year. 96 gets the friendly call. Again, if you are a righty or a lefty and you're threatening to go maybe four or five feet outside the zone, it looks like both of those could be cold strikes today. As that one was, Connor Wong now down 0 1. 96, jam him up high. And who wants it? It's Ty France. And he will get this one. We'll flip up to the top of the order. It is one up, one down here. You got Emmanuel Valdez at first with the single that got past a diving France and Polanco. And Jaron Duran, again, who will get his second bat. He has got a little bit of the uh, Hulk Hogan hair. Is that what I want to call it on that side? Is that, that one's died out. I'm not going to say that's gray. I would assume for 27, you wouldn't have gray hair yet, although I, I definitely did at that point. I'm 37 now, so a lot more gray. 97, way outside the zone, up toward the top right of the box. It's called a strike. So Castillo is getting those. Good luck. 88, way down, and Duran's going to offer these behind the count now. 0-2. 
that went at 88 after the 97 mile an hour fastball. The one thing, at least for the Boston Red Sox now, is Regan Castillo throw a little bit. He's going to be well past the 15 pitches per inning that you kind of want to be at for terms of efficiency unless he gets a double play here. Turn and throw. Paul Usen's disengagement on Valdez. He's got one more left. Still 0-2. <clears throat> We're getting a look at Valdez's uh, sketchers, essentially, that he's using out there for the cleats as this one goes away outside. I'll say sketchers for the S on there as it's ball one. One and two is the count at 87. And they mix them between some purple for Ty France and some red for Valdez. 45% hard hit rate. We'll see what Duran does here. He swings and misses. On a changeup, and it's going to be two down here for the Red Sox. It'll bring it up to Rafi Devers, and at least now for Castillo, if he wants to. I know he's one of the best pitchers in the world here, but you can afford to be careful with Devers if you want to. Now with two strikes with Valdez at first with two outs. That's just me. Make sure you don't give anything for Devers to hit 0 for 1 with a strikeout in the first. Fastball immediately up toward his dome. He'll fire it back at 96. 0 1. 157 hits for Devers. 33 bombs. And he won a silver slugger last year. Pitch number 48. As the clock is down to about five seconds. 95. This is hit pretty good. Julio Rodriguez going back. He's going to run out of room. It's a Rafi bomb. A 2 nothing lead for the Boston Red Sox as he takes his strut around the bases. Looks like Devers got a fastball up toward the barrel of the bat at 95, so that wasn't even Castillo's best velocity. And Devers does exactly what he's supposed to do with those pitches because he's a star. Hit it out of the ballpark. And I was just mentioning, want to be careful here for Rafi. Don't give him anything to hit because he's by far the Red Sox best player. And Castillo made a mistake there. 1-1 one, one for Trevor Story now as 85 gets the call on a change of low. So very friendly strike zone. Pitch number 51, 97, will split the plate as well. But this will push Hanniger to the warning track, makes the catch. Red Sox do damage. It's a two-run bomb for Devers. Let's go bottom three. <clears throat> So Boston Red Sox get the first runs of this game on a Rafael Devers two-run shot. Valdez got the single, and it was a mistake pitch for Luis Castillo that was served toward left center, and Boston takes a 2-0 lead as we go to bottom three. 
It'll be Josh Rojas, J.P. Crawford, and Julio Rodriguez do up 9, 1, and 2 part of the order. <clears throat> So checking back in to a full ballpark at T-Mobile. John Hunter with you on the call. It'll be Josh Rojas leading off in the bottom three. Bayo's got some run support now, courtesy of a two-run jack from Rafael Devers. As Boston's up 2 nil. Bayo throwing pitch number 36. 95. Gets the call on the fastball. We're going to be saying that a lot. It's just outside. Again, anything three, four feet off the plate, you're going to get the call today. 1-1, one, one. as this is hit pretty good for Rojas, toward the right field line near the warning track, and making the catch just before leaving the yard is Tyler O'Neill. Rojas just missed hitting a fastball out toward right field, and this will go ahead and bring up J.P. Crawford. Pull back up the Side of the boxes, so I can look at them both. For JP, again, as we said, he can mix anywhere in this lineup between 1 and 9, but he's batting lead off today in our opening day. 0 for 1 with a ground out. As he gets busted in with a change up, backs off the plate. 0 and 1 here for JP. Again, Seattle's been able to put some pressure on the Red Sox here, but that double play that Mitch Carver hit into definitely cost him some runs. This could be a situation where this game probably should be at a 2 2 tie. But we'll see if J.P. can continue to do the damage he's done all last year. Home run, RBI, and runs last year, all career high. 1965 between the home runs and RBIs last year. 97. This time doesn't get the call. We've been seeing it being a strike all day. And J.P. Crawford with the hitter's leverage, 3-0. See if he just takes one here or if he gets a mistake. 96 low. It's a good pitch there for Bayo as he tries to work his way back. 3-1. This is toward the bottom quadrant of the zone. JP waiting on the 3-1 as Bayo gets set to deliver. 97. No problem for the second baseman Valdez as he throws over to Costas. Two up, two down here for the Mariners. And that will leave it up to Julio Rodriguez. Again, the 23-year-old, I mentioned it last year in my notes, a superstar. I really don't think I have to change much. Again, he had 102 runs across with 103 RBI, 102 runs scored. He does it all. He's got a lot of speed. One for him, the double in the first as he hit a mistake pitch pretty good. Takes a 96. It was a good take anyway. Nothing to do with that, but makes it 0 one here. Julio Rodriguez again still 23. He's been locked up long term for Seattle. So you'll expect him to retire as a member of the Tridents. Trident up. That's their tag for the Mariners this year. Dirty Water is the tag for Boston. Please tell me why that is on that side. I know it's been the last couple of years. If there are any Red Sox fans listening in, enlighten me, please. 1 1 against Julio. 96. A yeah, fastball. Lace down the right field line foul. We'll do it again. Extra base hits. Was pretty good for Julio. 37 steals as well. So he's just all over it as far as being able to do production. Should he reach Jorge Polanco, would be next. I like him in that three spot. I really like the pickup for the Mariners. I know they lost to Eugenio Suarez and Teoscar Hernandez, but getting Hanniger and the opportunity as this one is down the left field line foul. And then picking up Jorge Polanco as well. Vanegar and Polanco to add for the exits is Suarez and Teoscar Hernandez. I think we're good. You needed an everyday infielder for Seattle. You didn't want to have too much platoon there with Rojas and Canzo. I think that was a good add. One and two. 97 chopper. And Story will charge it. And he will go ahead and make the play against a speedy Rodriguez. Mariners are turned away on a one, two, three. Let's go to the fourth. Boston, up by a pair. <clears throat> Have you had your 
wash dishes that didn't get cleaned. Auto Cascade Platinum Plus has me doing dishes, different scrubs, so no. I do scrape, load, and I'm done. Platinum Plus is Cascade's best clean ever. With double the dawn and double the scrubbers, it removes the toughest grease and food residue for an irresistible clean and shine. Rewash. Not my house. Upgrade to Cascade Platinum Plus. Dare to dish differently. Hey, 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 h
slammed this one way up into the crowd fall. He stayed with it. He got his hands to the barrel of the bat almost. It's impressive because that was riding up toward his face, still able to fall it off. That almost caught the top of the strike zone nonetheless. 43% hard hit rate for Tyler O'Neill. So when he does make contact with the baseball, he can go pretty far. Pitch clock down to five. That's kind of where Castillo likes to deliver at 95. This will be served right back to JP. And Casas, for whatever reason, he was not running hard. If he was running on contact there, he might have been able to beat that at second base because Crawford bobbled the ball. He was kind of just thinking it was a customary double play, and Tristan Costas never ran out of the box. So that's a break for the Mariners there. I know it should have been a double play turn, but honestly, I think if Costas didn't hesitate, he might have been able to beat that at the second base. Sheeta now at the dish. Fastball high at 92. And the velocity starting to dip a little bit. They're showing some of the MLB scores. I do want to get to this. Corbin Burns makes his Baltimore O's debut. Just one earned run in six innings, 11 strikeouts. That is a hell of a pickup there for the Orioles. As Yoshida laces this past Hanniger. It's going to bounce off the wall. And now they're in business, are the Red Sox. Yoshida gets his double. And you got Casas at third. Casas might have already been able to score, but that was a 95 that split the plate essentially with 105 exit velocity. So Yoshida got all of that. And essentially, I would say three of the mistake pitches that Castillo has thrown in this game have all been in hard for damage. So the infield's pulled in for Sedan Rafaela. See if he can come through in a key spot. 96 near the left side, bottom left. They have three more games as they start the year with a four-game series at T-Mobile Park. There are no off days. Normally the Tigers play one game and they have days off. Seattle does not. This is caught. Here's a play at the plate, and the throw is wild. It hit him on the head, I think. So it's going to score a run for the Boston Red Sox and the throw for Rojas. I think as he tried to hit Raleigh, might have hit Tristan Costas in the dome. Let me see. So Rojas steps in the bag of third. They're out there. It bounced to hit off the top of O'Neill's helmet. And speaking of everything that we see in broadcasts, we talk about things I never see. Rojas's throw to Raleigh hit O'Neill. On the top of his helmet. So they're not going to get the out at home. Fielder's choice in an RBI. 3-0 is the score. This is skied up in the air. Is it going to stay in play? Who wants it? It's Rojas. We'll call Raleigh off. Two outs. So the Red Sox do get a run. But, man, oh, man, it's something I've never seen before. Rojas tried to make the throw to Cal Raleigh at the dish. They just hit Tom Rodeo right in the head. It's always something when I do these broadcasts with or without any partners here that we'll just find something that we don't see. So Castillo, I didn't expect this. He's given up three runs here in his opening day start against a Red Sox team that – in the AL East, I'm trying to be as kind as possible. I still think we'll hover around four or five. I think that's probably their ceiling out of the five teams just because you have the O's, you have the Blue Jays, you have the Rays and the Yankees. Yankees, Juan Soto, I saw that a little bit earlier today. His throw in toward the dish able to get the runner out, and the Astros lost by a run. Juan Soto already paying dividends. Throw, got the runner tied up at second. No problem, as the Mariners will take their easy out. But the Red Sox do more damage. They get one more run across the dish. It's 3 0. So we go to bottom four.
To get back to that fiction, it's too expensive to remodel your bathroom. In fact, with that debtor's tub over tub process, you'll get the bath you want to completely move into the bottom of the fourth, and we welcome the boot members Hall of Famer, the King. Hey, it's Hernandez. It's great to see you, man. Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's good to see you. Thank you. Now, if you pick up on any animosity from Mike, it's only because he has the exact same jacket. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's just, he might be a little bitter about that, but that's okay. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Push through. Push yeah, through. I'll do with it. Hey, you were out there catching the ceremonial first pitch. Well, I didn't catch that. I missed it. I don't feel so bad. I did see it. Okay. We're talking about Felix Hernandez in the broadcast booth. They're already visited by Nelson Cruz. You got some of the best in the game to ever do it. That's Polanco now one and one in the count against Bale. Bale's got another run to work with here. And for Brian Bale, this has been a pretty good start for the youngster here. Like what I see from what he's offering today. Seattle and Jorge Polanco now. They're down three nothing. Polanco with his second at bat. He already reached today with a solid single. Again, he's going to be the everyday second baseman, the everyday infielder, essentially, for the Mariners. He's a really good pickup for them. This Bay about to throw pitch number 51. 1 2. Did it hit him in the foot? I know he didn't offer at it. So, yeah, Polanco's going to take his base on a hit by pitch as it hit him in the bottom of the left foot. And he is on for the second time today. And Mitch Carver has an opportunity to right his wrongs. He had ducks on the pond with Polanco and Rodriguez at third and first in the first inning. And it was grounded into a double play that essentially killed it. After that, he had a Rafaela sacrifice that made it 3 0 on Fielder's Choice because the throw from Rojas to Raleigh hit Tyler O'Neill in the head. And then he had Rafael Devers with a two-run bomb. And that's where we are right now is the Red Sox have a 3 nothing lead, bottom four. So Polanco at first. Garber, 86, up high. He is the DH today. He will be the backup catcher for Cal Raleigh when he needs a day off. But he's going to probably be the everyday DH. I think that will continue to move as this season goes along, depending on how Garber does. 2-0. Pitch clock down to three and 96. It's been called a ball sometimes today, even though that was well in the zone. Toward the bottom left quadrant. If you split that into nine, you would think toward the bottom left there, just to give you the visual representation that I'm seeing on the red sports feed. Two and one. This is a good fastball to swing at. Garver puts a charge into it right in the center field. And no problem. For Sedane Rafaela as he'll back up a few steps before the wall and makes the catch. So Garber put on a really good swing on that one. Sometimes that's all you can do. That'll bring up Cal Raleigh, who is in the middle of the order, batting fit today. 229 average, 30 bombs, 75 RBI for Big Cal, 54 walks, 128 strikeouts as well. 27 years old, power, dependable, does it all behind the dish. 88. This one's popped up way back. Connor Wong, hoping it's going to stay in play, but we're just taking a obligatory look as this one goes back into the stands. So, again, you have the platoon situation for Raleigh and Garver. I think that's a little bit stronger than Wong and McGuire. But, again, as I've said, that's what the Red Sox have in front of them. I'm not sure about their catching prospects. I do know about Marcel Mayer on the side for the shortstop, who took that big contract bonus a few seasons ago as being one of the top picks, one of the best picks Boston's ever had because they're not normally in toward the bottom of the standings. Swing and a miss on a changeup at 88, nowhere near the zone. When I'm looking at those top prospects, again, Mayer, 21, shortstop infielder, the fourth overall pick in 2021, a $6.65 million signing bonus. Roman Anthony, Roman Anthony the 19-year-old outfielder, a $2.5 million signing bonus. The highest of surrounding picks in the third round at 79. So they wanted their money. They got their money. And when you get that money, when you get in the big leagues, they expect you to produce. And I think for Marcelo Meyer and for Roman Anthony, who's 19, we're going to be seeing uh, Mayer, I think, pretty soon. Anthony's still a little ways to go. 
but we'll see where that goes in the Red Sox prospect pool. On top of what we mentioned today, you want to see more production from uh, Jaron Duran and Tristan Casas. That's that for sure. Uh, Sedane Rafaela, who's 23. Those would be some other pieces. Manuel Valdez, still 25. You want to see their production as the Red Sox continue to build. 2 2 pitch. Bale. Roll over. This is going to be a tough turn. They will get the lead runner at second, but no more. So, fielder's choice there. Two outs here for the Ms. Now, we'll leave it up to Mitch Hanniger, who's going to get his second at bat of the day, having six on this line. Again, 61 games last year for Mitch. 209, six bombs, 28 RBI. At his best, though, Mitch is a guy that hits about 260. Above that, 25 home runs plus. He can be an everyday corner outfielder as well. That brings you the power. And I think the Yams are very happy to have him back. Hanniger will slap on a left field line. This hit pretty good. It's gone. Mitch Hanniger with a two-run blast. Welcome back to Mitch. And the Yams are back into this ball game. Make it three to two. Mitch Hanniger, welcome back, sir, as he crosses the dish. And the M's now make it a 3-2 game. And Dominic Canzone will get a chance to do it again with the bases empty. 102 exit velocity, 372 feet. That means he hit it in the right spot in right field. doesn't matter how far it is. He gets to grab the trident and take a little poke. Career high, 39 home runs, 100 RBI in 2021. Mitch Hanniger loves to play in this ballpark. I think the fans are definitely happy to have him back. It's only fitting, I think Cooper Hopkins would say, that Mitch Hanniger gets the first runs of the game for the Amos. So Dom Canzo, as we'll get settled for 7, 8, 9. Number 7 in the order today with two outs in the bottom four as the Mariners fall back into this ball game. They were down three, but a two-run shot. Off bay off Maniger. Makes it 3 2. A 1. Change up way low. Put the count back to 1 and 1. Canzone in his first at bat today was a strikeout. 0 for 1. Has pitch clock down to 5. Bay about to throw pitch number 64. 97. Story is going to have a tough play, but he made that look routine. Again, good to see him back in the field. But it's Hanniger. With the damage as he puts it toward right field just over the fence. And the M's now only down a run. Let's go to the fifth. Three two socks with the lead. Strongest player on the 
So we'll get set for top five. Mitch Haniger now has gotten the Mariners within one. It's a 3-2 ball game. As he just got it over, the right field one. <clears throat> Their profile on Mitch Haniger and why not? His shot of the two-run variety made it a 3-2 game, so Boston's lead is cut down by a run. Connor Wong is batting ninth. It's his second at-bat of the day. He popped out in the third to crack and have a one nothing lean over the Ducks. They're showing it on Root Sports Plus. Again, I have the Root Sports feed for opening day of the primary on MLB TV, courtesy of T-Mobile. And also thank you to Cooper Hopkins for telling me about that last year because when you switch over to that, you get it for free. No, that's not a product plug placement, but I'm telling you, if you got T-Mobile, go download it now before April 1st. Watch for free. One, two. Fastball up high. I thought it was going to break his bat. Connor Wong does survey it down the right field line, and we'll do it again. Castillo still out there. Again, toward opening day, you would think around six innings is the margin. One, two. He swings and misses on a devastating slider, and Wong is punched out. One up, one down the fifth. So, John, out here with you on the call on the Root Sports feed. Thank you for joining me on the YouTube side and on the Twitter space at John Ryan, as always, in that same tag if you want to clear audio. I said, do you think the Mariners will be a wild card team in 2024? There's five votes. You all say yes. That's kind of where I see them right now. Could they possibly win a couple of rounds? Yeah. I think the Mariners have a really good pitching staff this year, and that's what's going to allow them to do a lot of damage. This is going to fall this one down, first base one, do it again. 3-2 is the score. Boston out in front. Sedane Rafaela got a fielder's choice from a Rojas uh, feed to Raleigh that hit him right in the head. And Tyler O'Neill ended up scoring a run. And on the other end, he had a two-run jack for Rafi Devers. That was the reset for the Red Sox. And for the M's, Jorge Polanco got hit by a pitch. And then Mitch Haniger hit a two-run shot. Made it 3-2 as the M's have made it a 1-1 game again. 0-2. Oh, it's Jaron Duran. 88. This one's hit well. This one's going to not split the gap. It's cut off by Mitch Haniger. Maybe be served in the right field. Duran's got himself a base hit. And I'll bring up another opportunity for Devers. So I'll repeat what I said the first time Devers was up. Well, I should say second time. The second time he had a home run. Be careful with Rafi here. Don't give him any pitches to hit. You don't have to. I still would leave it here on Story, Casas, O'Neill, someone else to play damage and placate it. It was a mistake pitch for Castillo from the top left of the box, right in the happy zone, off the barrel of the bat, and Devers moonshotted one toward left center field. And this is a straight takeoff here, so Alex Cora signified the hit and run. I'm going to have to go back. One for two with a two-run jack in the second. 24 out of 26 stolen bases for Duran was pretty good. So the percentages are good. You got a good bat the ball skills here for Devers. Makes a lot of sense for what they want to do here. And the disengagement used. Castillo's got one more left as he tries to keep Duran close. Again, we just signified his stolen base counter. 0-1. Short cautiously for Casas. This time he does not go as the changeup will miss way outside. Make it one and one. Again for Devers, we mentioned those numbers. 271, but he's more toward 290. He's a guy that can get you 115, 120 RBI. He really is that damn good. And he's batting second in the order because you got Story and Casas. And he is going to sting one toward the right field line. Duran should have no problem going first to third. His question is whether they're going to send him. They will not. Devers gets a double. He's having himself a fantastic game right now. He's got a home run. He's got a double. Again, he's one of the very best hitters in Major League Baseball. And when Castillo 
It's pitches that catch too much of the plate. I will say that for both of those times where Devers has been on the dish, Devers will make you pay. I just don't think there's any other way to say it. I still think of him as one of the best hitters in all of baseball. And when you talk about 271, 100 RBI, and 33 home runs, that sounds fantastic. That's a down year for somebody like him. That's how good Devers is. So you got Duran at third. You got Devers at second. And Castillo, one out in the top of the fifth. And this is where you really have to limit the damage. I think you can only really give up one more. I understand the Mariners' offense can get the job done. But don't let this get out of hand between six and seven. That means Castillo is going to have a rough outing to begin opening day, which is something I did not expect if that happens to be the case. Three, four runs, fine. You get to five, six, seven, not really. Diamondbacks are up 16 to one on the Rockies. They scored 14 runs in the third inning. Glad I did not cover that game. I think I would have lost my voice by then. My goodness. 16 1 in the fourth. <laughs> Diamondbacks made the World Series last year, and they added Jordan Montgomery. This is served up foul straight back from the story, make it 1 and 1. So in 2018 with the Rockies, 291, 37 home runs, 108 RBI. That gives you the type of player that the Red Sox thought they were inheriting. But for Trevor Story, he played just 137 games in two seasons with Boston. He's got to stay healthy. 196 with runners in scoring position last year in 43 games, two bombs, 12 RBI. Thornton and Sosato getting warm. For the M's. <clears throat> Two one pitch way outside as we get a little bit of a solar flare spike from the light. Tyler Saucedo. Taylor Saucedo and Tyler Thornton. Taylor and Tyler. 3 1 count here for Trevor Story. If Trevor Story is right, if you make a mistake here, this could be 6 2. Tucks the bat back over the shoulder, and he throws the bat back. Bases are loaded, and it's Tyler O'Neill who is a definite home run threat at the dish. Scott Service is looking on to see what he wants to do. Is he going to bide some time with a mound visit? In toward opening day, as we said, most pitchers only go about six innings. He's at 84 pitches. He's probably getting toward that max. This is the high leverage situation. Casas down the first baseline. Foul. So Casas next, then Tyler O'Neill. My apologies as he's batting cleanup. 571 with the bases loaded and his four out of seven opportunities with nine RBI. Limited sample size, heavy damage. As the T-Mobile crowd is looking on, they're silent right now, and they're holding their breath. That's Castillo waiting. Oh, we'll get the sign from Raleigh. Deliver the L1. It's followed straight back, and he's got the count in his favor, does Luis. This is a big out to get in this game with bases loaded, one out. Strikeout, double play. Anything to not advance those runners. Casas' strikeout rate at 25%. Doesn't strike out very often. One in every four at-bats in 132 games played last season. 0-2. 96 up high. Too close to take. We'll stay alive and see another one. At 96. Nothing wrong with the velocity for Castillo. If you're just joining in, it's a good time to do so. A high leverage at bat for the Red Sox. Bases loaded. Tristan Casas down. 0-2 in the count. Castillo, one out. Trying to get out of the bases loaded jam. 87. This is going to be a tough play. Polanco can't get enough on the throw. They'll say that Crawford able to step on the bag. No matter. Duran's going to score. And now it's 4-2. I can't believe Polanco even got there, to be honest with you. Trevor's story running hard. This just gets in a portion of the glove, 
and Crawford has his foot on the bag and gets the ball into his glove before Story gets there. So sacrifice the sorts, drives in another run, and Boston up 4-2. So runners at first and third. Castillo trying to limit the damage at one. He's been touched up from a run with the last couple of innings. Walk, stolen base, and a run scored for Teller O'Neill. It was over one today. 86, perfect pitch. Cutter at 86, 01 for Teller O'Neill. You have runners at third and first. Devers at third. Casas at first. 95, misses high. They get one and one. Teller O'Neill with runners in scoring position, two outs was dreadful. Four and 36, 111 average. So now is not a time that you want to wake him up. Pitch clock down to five. As Castillo delivers. Fastball high. Should not be a problem for Hanniger as he gets underneath it and the commercial cuts quickly. So we're going to assume that he caught it. And the Red Sox are out a little to score a run. And we'll see what happens now. Mariners still down by two. A little break. You know that feeling of having to rewash dishes that didn't get clean? I know Cascade Platinum Plants has me doing dishes. Different scrub, soap, milk. I do straight, load, and again. Platinum Plus is Cascade's best clean ever. With double the dawn and double the scrubbers, it removes the toughest grease and food residue for a new resistant clean shot. Rewash. Then my house. Operate the Cascade Platinum Plus. Dare the dish differently. This is a hero walking his youngest down the aisle, which drew the bladder to the side of the Yet he stands strong, rough, keeping the leaf only to the side. Depends. He only stays stronger than us. Did you? Checking back in, Ty France struck out in the second. He's down in the count. Oh, 195 inside from Bayo. Make it 1-1. One, one. Again, Bayo's had some run support. Four innings pitch, four hits, two runs, two earned, two strikeouts. Pitch number 67 of his day, 86 inside. He'll be spit on by France. 2-1. It's been a good ball game, but for Luis Castillo, I don't think he's been as sharp as he would have liked today. Although the Mariners still in Striking distance, 86 up high. Good take there for France. Josh Rojas will be next. 3-1 is the count. We'll see what Bale can do. The 24-year-old, 96 perfect pitch. Bottom right part of the box with a fastball. Make it a full count. John Hunter with them, Nicole. It is the Root Sports feed. It is the Red Sox and the Mariners. Boston Red Sox enjoying a 4-2 lead. Tristan Costas, the latest run on a fielder's choice. Jam shot. Trevor Story, no problem. Throws out Ty France. Delivers to Costas. One up, one down in the fifth. We're at T-Mobile Ballpark in Seattle. John out here with you. I am not with Cooper Hopkins today. He messaged he had to get through a work assignment. So I'm going to cover this one solo. I had too much prep work to be done. We kind of throw that in the trash, so we're covering this one 
We'll see how I feel tomorrow as far as Gonzaga and Purdue. I'll try to get some of those notes. Probably won't be as much prep work for that one. We'll see who gets in the Elite Eight there. As it is Rojas, who bats ninth. Again, when you're doing a baseball game, you always have to do a lot of prep because you have to have a lot of talking and stats out front. 0 for 1 flat in the third for Rojas. And he just missed in his last in the flat on the third day. Warning track shot to right field. Bale about to throw pitch number 73. It's a 1 1 count here for Josh. The lineup will turn over to JP Crawford. As the changeup misses way low at 88. Again, Mariners fireworks night, May 31st against the Angels, June 14th against the Rangers, July 3rd against the Orioles, August 9th against the Mets, mixing with the Giants, Rangers, and the A's on September 27th. When you look toward the back end of that, you have a lot of teams in the West that you'll be playing against. You would hope that the Mariners can get some of those games against the A's and chalk up those easy wins. 2-2. Two, two. As this goes way low on the change of the count, will swell to full. It's J.P. Crawford going to get set to remove the donut on the on-deck circle. They are going to throw pitch number 76. This is going to be served off the end of the bat. This is going to work out good as they'll drop in front of Duran and Rojas. We'll go ahead and get somebody on base and J.P. Crawford as we'll flip it over for the third time. We'll come to the dish. So a 96-mile-an-hour sinker, and he just stayed through the bat head. Caught a little bit of the end of it. I'm not going to say the meat of the bat, but for the barrel. But he's able to serve that one right to left field and stay with the pitch. And that's exactly what you want. J.P. Crawford, 0 for 2. As he waits on the 77 pitch for Bale, that's a beautiful one, sinker, 96 miles an hour. Just caught the bottom right of the box. Jorge Polanco's had himself a day, a single and a hit by pitch as well. So he's done his job. You might think Jorge Polanco could bat fourth in this order. J.P. will serve a ball that goes all the way back down the right field line with the ball. As Bale got him to jump out in front of it. Taking a look at Julio Rodriguez, and on the deck would be Flower Print for the M's. 0 2. This will be off the end of the bat as well, way low, but Crawford will fight it off and we'll love to see another pitch. They are about to get 80 pitches through his day, so I think we will see. The end of the day, I will say for Castillo, we get the bottom five. That's my guess. Bayo might be able to get to the six, depending on what he does, and then probably the end for Bayo as well, considering it is opening day. 88, change up low. Was in the same spot before, but this time Crawford doesn't offer. Takes it as a ball. So for JP, his splits don't matter. His production does. 16 home runs, 44 RBI against righties, but. 267, 266 between lefties and righties, respectively. The on base percentage a little bit higher at 846 for the drawn walks for JP, but the average pretty similar. Rojas, a perfect 12 for 12 steal on bases last year. He's at first. Pitch clock down to five. This just misses. Good take. For JP and 97, just up the outside of the box. It's two and two. We're in the bottom five. John and I are within the call. At John Renaud, the YouTube and the Twitter space side. The M's trail by a pair. It's 4 2. Crawford off the end of the bat. Who wants it? It's going to be a long run for Devers. No problem, though, as he makes it just shy of the track for the left field foul line. And two up. Two down with a runner at first. You have Josh Rojas. He's the runner. Julio Rodriguez will be his third at that of the day. The 23-year-old. He's already laced a double. He's had some good at-bats. He's got a lot of speed. He's always a threat for a stolen base as well. He's a threat for power. He's a complete five-tool player, Julio Rodriguez. And the Mariners have landed themselves a superstar for years to come. And it's always going to have one of those. Bale said a nice day today. We'll see if he can close it out strong. 
as this is a slider just outside. 1-0. One, oh. one for two with a double in the first for Julio. Again, runners at first and third were stranded with Rodriguez at third and Flanca first respective on a double play for Mitch Garver. They could have scored some runs in that first. Julio Rodriguez, an inside pitch, and fights it right to Tyler O'Neill, who makes the catch, and the M's are turned away. Let's go to the six. Boston up 4-2. We offer a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty on every vehicle in our lineup. A fact that should make you confident in your confidence that you've made the right choice with Kia. Kia, movement that inspires. You may think your home's concrete sits on solid ground. The chances are it doesn't. Excess moisture and soil compaction can all cause the most concrete to settle. The good news is, we are jump right back in. Perfect. So you and your family will be best Because the problem won't be better time, but they will get better with us. Call Ayers Basement Systems today for your free estimate. Isn't it bull that some companies make their employees work in dark, cramped conditions? Is that good for business? At Vital Farms, we believe happy employees are good for business. Vital Farms, keeping it bull free. Mothers, CMX Ceramic. Mariners baseball on Route 4 is brought to you by Emerald Queen Casino Hotel. A night of reggae music. UB40 comes to the Emerald Queen Casino July 21st with their Red Red Wine Tour. Tickets at EmeraldQueen.com. By your local Ford dealer, home of the F-150, America's best-selling truck for 47 years. And by Virginia Mason Franciscan Health, the Mariners' proud partner in health. Luis Castillo done after five innings. Six hits, four runs. They all are a few run home runs in the mix. A couple of walks. <clears throat> five strikeouts. Scott calls on Taylor Sancedo out of the bullpen. It's Yoshida. Just two runs. He can plumbing and call to the pen. You can hear last year four runs coming out of the bullpen. Piece of it, found back. Pretty good sense of running it in on its hands. This is average fastball, 92 miles an hour. Has a Checking back underneath the action here. John Under with you with the Root Sports feed. It's a 4 2 lead for Boston, and it's a call to the bullpen. Teller Saucedo will go ahead and provide relief for Luis Castillo. So his pitching line is done through five. He's in line for the loss. He's given him four today, which is not something that you would have expected. But that is where we are right now. It's one up, one down in the six. We'll go back into the side of the box, and it will bring up Sedane Raffaella. He's going to bat seventh in the order today. This is the third time through. Again, he does have a sacrifice of sorts of the fielder's choice that scored him a run in the 0 for 2. It's one of those ones that hit Tyler O'Neill in the head. Again, that's a play that I will mention a few times through this game as they try to find the read from. Rojas to uh, Raleigh, and they're just sitting on the back of the helmet and they're scoring a run. Rafael Devers has been the man, though. Two runs shot and a double. He's kind of paced this Red Sox offense. Yoshida has listed double as well. Rafael, a big cut and a changeup, but he missed it all. 1 2, 83. That was in the zone. And the left side black. So I'll say I'm going to throw pitch number eight. One up, one down on the six for him. As this is a change up just off the end of the bat. And thankfully for the M's, it rolls foul because Rafael would have had an easy single there. That's unfortunate. So 2024 matchups versus the Red Sox. 
Again, you got the four games in the opener at T-Mobile Park, and the three games in Boston, and that's it, and that's all in between. That's seven matchups between these two teams. Again, the schedule of the last couple of years were more spread out where you will play more of the teams outside of your division and less against divisional opponents. I happen to like that change, but what say you? Rafaela waiting on the one-two. And close to offering at it, did Rafaela, but he did not go. Just able to hold at the plate. And we'll do it again. The 23-year-old rookie out of Curacao, again, at 241 average and 28 games played. So he'll likely get a longer look today. Again, he was given the note the last few days from Alex Cora that he was going to start an opening day and get a chance to get pretty good luck in the major leagues right now. And why not? This is hit well down the left field line. It's a fair ball past Dom Canzone. Rafaela's got some foot speed. He doesn't lose the helmet. He's going to go ahead and try to go to third. And they did not get the swipe tag in. Rafaela, that's why they're doing the dirty water. They're doing the swimming on that side. They're just continuing to find a way to go all the way through. Rafaela pushed it a little bit. And Dom Canzone. I don't know if he had as much urgency as he needed to in left field. He was kind of being nonchalant playing that one off the wall to me. And that allowed Rafaela to never stop running and get a touch before the tag hit him. He got those bigger bases now. But good urgency there for Rafaela. He gets a triple, and this might easily get Boston a run here as long as they can get a sacrifice fly. So... Good work there for Rafaela. I'm not so sure I like that defensive play for Dom Canzone. No question he had to play it off the wall, but I definitely think he could have hustled a little bit more. That's just me. They're showing the J-Rod bobblehead in the three-day giveaway. Monday and Wednesday against the Guardians. The first 10,000 fans each game will get one. So they're going to have a lot of those. 30,000 fans in the span of the first 10,000 three days will we'll get J. Rod bobbleheads. That's a pretty cool one, though, with the shrug and then the head tilt. I like that. So infield in, and there'll be an opportunity here for Emmanuel Valdez, who's had a strong game today, does not get the call to Sacedo. Again, you got the Julio Rodriguez no-fly zone bobblehead, 1-3rd. to third. Payne Griffey Jr. home run robbery, 15-17th to 17th in April. Peanut Snoopy and J.P. Crawford City Connect jersey. Pretty cool. Those are good giveaways there for the Mariners. I give them an A-plus for that. So Pablo Reyes is going to be the new batter. He's going to take over for Valdez. I'm not sure why. Unless they're just going to split the tune there. Maybe against the uh, lefty switch. But Valdez had himself a good game today. 84. That one was a little bit farther out. And he got the call. So this will be Reyes. Pablo Reyes is in the eighth spot now for Valdez. Change that in your scorecard. 287 and 64 games. One and two. Swing. Just gets a piece of it. Cal Raleigh couldn't hold. And the Red Sox stay alive. One, two. I think the dirty water reference now that I think about it for Boston because not afraid to get your hands dirty, sliding in the dirt and making things happen. Is that my guess? I'm going to go with that one. 92. That's strike three. That's top left corner. That's a good pitch for Salcedo, and it throws Reyes. He's going to take a seat. It's still going to be Rafaela at third, and Connor Wong is going to chance to play hero and give the Red Sox another run. Try to make it 5-2 to two if they can come through on the top of the six. Red Sox would like a three-run lead. Again, it's just opening day, and you got three more games against the M's, but this would be a good start for the Sox because they got a pitching step that they got to go through in terms of the Mariners. That can be quite difficult. you got George Kirby, I believe, tomorrow. Brian Wu is going to be out for a month, so they'll miss him. But there's several other pieces that the Mariners roll with. This one slammed foul down the left field line. 84 way out in front was Connor Wong. Good job to get the bat head on. It's going to slow it down a little bit. As the fans urge the Salcedo to get out of this. 0-2. 
87. This is played three and three against the Mariners last season. So these teams went 500 against each other. The Red Sox get this start. Hey, you could maybe have in a seven-game series something close to that. 86. This is flipped off down the bat. It's trouble. It's going to drop in front of Hanniger, and that's going to score the run. Connor Wong comes through in a good situation with leverage, and the Red Sox take a 5-2 lead. This is a very good and productive Boston offense, and I said it a little bit in the opening as far as my notes prep. I was a little concerned about some of the parts in their offense on the back end. Not obviously not with Devers, but you want to have Story be healthy. You know, Tristan Costas is good, but these guys are coming through. Ty France, this will be Duran. They'll bounce right to him. So Sato gives up a run, and the Red Sox have their biggest lead of the game. Make it three. It's 5-2 as we go bottom six. Good part of the order here from the Mariners, Jorge Polanco. This is his third time through, and he's already reached twice with a single and a walk. It's Isaiah Campbell in of the bullpen here for Boston. And I will make sure we get in the break. I'll change the pitching lines. Curveball at 81. Not sure what Polanco was waiting for there. Now 0-2 against Jorge. We transferred from Minnesota to Seattle. Ryan Bale goes five, only gives up two on five hits. As 82 goes way down low. Blanco doesn't offer at it. Again, a single and a hit by pitch. Hit by pitch is what was costly there for Bale because then Hanniger got a two run jack, but that's all the Mariners have. The Red Sox have scored in four straight innings, two runs in the third. And then one, four, five, six. Polanco. This is the right field line near the warning track. Looking up, jumping, making the catch on the right field line. Good work there for the Red Sox. And I'll make sure that I get my clarification on that. Who was playing right field today? Tyler O'Neill makes a jumping catch just before the yellow line of the wall. 
So this has been a really good game for Jorge Polanco. That was a warning track shot. Another five feet, that's probably a home run. Mitch Garber, 81 on the curve. Again, that's in a hittable spot. So for Campbell, 81, not a lot of velocity, and that's dropping right in the chute. The other Mariners might want to jump on that first pitch from what we're seeing. 88, this would be a broken bat. No problem off the cue ball. And Garber is done. Garber is one of those guys today. Just one game, but not very strong right for Mitch with his new team in the middle of that order. That's kind of stopped a little bit, especially from that uh, first inning. Again, it's just one game, however. Isaiah Campbell made his MLB debut July 7th, 2023 at Houston with Seattle. And now he's a member of the Red Sox. And they do jump on the first pitch again. So Cal Raleigh was picking up on what I was throwing down. One for two, single in the second, and a run scored. Oh, for one as he took a stab at the curveball and put it down the right field line foul. Oh, and one. As Raleigh Campbell delivers another curve inside, so that's his first pitch feature. Kraken have a one nothing lead on the Ducks. That's what they're showing on Root Sports Plus and the Root Sports feed, so you get a lot of the Seattle prosperities here. Those are must-win games, but Seattle is one of those teams that's out of it. And sorry, Cooper Hopkins, send it for Calgary, and sorry for myself for the Red Wings. All probably missing the playoffs, so bunch of pain over here. One and two. At least the Tigers won today. One nothing. Tarek Skubal scored a six. One two. Cal Raleigh 94 off in about right down the middle of the plate. He led Major League Baseball catchers in home run the last two years. Cal Raleigh is one of those feast or famine type of guys, but he will draw his walks. 24 base stealers thrown on as well leads MLB. So he plays great, de great defense and hits for power. What more do you want from a catcher? He'll dig back in slowly. And Campbell, I think, is either going over with the signs with Connor or he's going to request a new baseball. Quickly, two up, two down here for the M's in the six. Curveball way outside, 82. So curveball predominant or fastball down the middle, and some of the curveballs have been down the middle as well. I think this might be a one-inning reservation for Alex Cora. 2-2. Two -two. A lot of movement on him. The Yacker misses the low. Count is now full. Should rally reach Mitch Hanniger, who had the two-run shot, is on deck. Cal's... 27% strikeout rate at 22% average. He punches through the curveball, and it wasn't enough. If you throw a lot of those, sometimes you'll get one. Campbell gets the K. Red Sox up by three as we go to the seven.
take your care. And on the Washington Traffic Safety Commission, always drive sober and wear your seatbelt. We all play a role in keeping our roads safe. Beginning the top of the seventh, Red Sox hold a 5 2 lead. Watch your favorite teams live on Root Sports and Root Sports Plus using our app. Just download the app. Log in with your TV provider account and phone. You're all set. The Root Sports app is a great way to watch on the go. Only available to customers whose TV subscription includes Root Sports. Pitcher from Mount Lerner's, a new bear. Louis Bolton takes over. Your sweeper lands for a strike. Rockwell Devers. <coughs> Cody Bolton now is a new end. He's going to be taking in over in the seventh. I believe we'll saw Sena. Castillo went five innings. He went five innings, six hits, four runs, four and five strikeouts. With a walk and mixed in there as well. And then Brian Bell, Brian Bale, I should say, five innings, five hits, two runs, two runs, two strikeouts for him. So both starters go five. Devers had an excellent day. This had 90 down the middle, but J.P. Crawford can of corn. Going to go ahead and make the catch as there's eight outs left to go here for the Boston Red Sox, but they're up three. Again, their back end of their bullpen, as far as what I have in my notes, is very, very good. So they've mixed in six with Campbell, who I was unfamiliar with. But if you're mixing in Martin and some of the other ones alongside uh, Kenley Jansen, it's going to be tough for the M's if they don't get this done right now. And it's holding 84. We'll split the play for Trevor Story, make it 0-1. John, I'm here with you. I got the Root Sports feed. It's a solo call today. I wanted to be joined by Cooper Hopkins, but he's understandably busy. But he did reach out and say, let's cover some of this more of the stuff of this on uh, MLB TV. I think we'll definitely do so, try to get in some M's games, mix in some baseball. I know we always fall in love with the hockey playoff side. That's not going to change, but I do think we'd be able to catch up more during the summer. We want to catch up as well with the M's. Not to mention our trip. 96. This is right to Mitch Hanniger from Trevor Story. And the M's really need a 1 2 3. We'll see if they can get that now. Was next, we'll be doing up Tristan Casas. We had a decent game as well. A little bit of a one legged kneel down there for Mitch Hanniger as he goes ahead and makes the grab. But no worse for wear. He has been busy out there in right field, and I mentioned that in the Root Sports side. We'll see if Bolton will finish it out. 84 splits the play. That's a changeup you got to swing at. Casas does not. One for three, single in the fourth, and an RBI. Seven pitches. Try to go one, two, three here. He's through two thirds of inning, just for leaving for Sauceda. This will be right back up to J.P. Crawford, no problem. And the Mariners get a 1 2 3 in the top of the seven. It's set to stretch. Mariners need some runs. They're down 3 5 2. Hanniger cans on France. Let's go to bottom seven.
So Isaiah Campbell's back out there. Took a sweeping curveball slider mix for a strike from Mitch Hanniger. One for two. Two-run bomb in the fourth. That's the Mariners' only offense right now. And we'll see if they can get some more. Red Sox are joining a 5-2 lead. T-Mobile Park in Seattle. John out here with you on the call. they got the Root Sports feed. This is up toward the hands. And Hanniger is going to follow it back. Make it one and two. Again, for this side of the order, the Hanniger, Canzo, and France, as Rodriguez will get set to get one up here for Boston. 83. Try to serve this one out to the outfield, and this will drop in right. Mitch Hanniger has had himself a nice return to Seattle. I know fans are happy to see him back. He's got a two-run shot now, a single, as he's been the offense here for the M's. He gets a hanging breaking ball. Off the plate, he just serves it off the end of the bat and toward center right field. Past a couple of those guys, and we'll see what happens. So Campbell going to go out and get the hook, and we'll keep it here for a moment, and we will check back in with you. So it's a good time for me to go ahead. Have we got anyone in the YouTube side? Can the Mariners come back, says Isaac? I think they can. Uh, they got to do it right now, though, because if you get into the side of the bullpen for the Red Sox where you have – let me make sure that I get through this. And uh, Martin and Kenley Jansen, Chris Martin's numbers in 51 and a third, 105 ERA, 103 whip. And Kenley Jansen still got a really good cutter. It's going to be tough if they don't do it right now when you get in that eighth and ninth. They're in the seventh. There are no outs here. You get an opportunity, but I think it's going to happen now. That's just me. Let's get in the MLB scoreboard. Again, most of these ones have gone final. Brewers, Mets, and Braves, Phillies postponed. The rain. Rangers win the first game. That one on ESPN, the final one 10. They win 4 3 over the Cubs. Reds dominate the Nationals as they should. Nationals aren't going to be very good this year. Nick Martini gets a home run in back-to-back -back innings. 8-2. Reds get eight runs on 10 hits. Blue Jays destroy the Rays. 8-2 on that side on the road at Tropicana. Dodgers all over the Cardinals. They win 7-1. They're 2-1 on the series because they split the soul in the series against the Padres. Padres are 2-1 as well. They get a 6-4 six six win over the Giants. Everybody else only played their first game. Pirates win in 12 over the Marlins. 6-5, Yankees and Astros, that was a thriller. Juan Soto with a good gun out at home probably saved the game. Five runs on eight hits, enough to beat the Astros four on 13. Twins all over the Royals, they win 4-1. The Orioles destroy the Angels at Camden, 11-3. Diamondbacks mercifully beating the Rockies, 16-1. Our game is 5-2 between the Red Sox and Mariners. Mariners at the dish. Guard, uh, Guardians and Athletics, it's all Cleveland, 6-0 over the A's. And Tigers win today, 1-0 against the White Sox. <clears throat> so during the commercial break, I gave the updated MLB scoreboard. Jolie Rodriguez is the new pitcher, and he will go up ahead, I believe, against a new hitter. We'll see what is going on on the side here. Dominic Moore has just checked in for the M's. Dominic Moore will go back into my box score. Will replace Dominic Canzone. So Dylan Moore for Dominic Canzone. 
as he is one of the bench guys that plays a little bit of everywhere. And they need his pinch hit at bat here. This one a little low, but not far enough for Hanniger to be able to theft a bag. Dylan Moore, 448 games, all with the Mariners. 8.32 OPS after the All-Star break. So he started to heat up a little bit, but Julie Rodriguez, the new pitcher for the Red Sox in front. 1-2, 90. This is hit well for Dylan Moore going back. Center fielder, it's gone. 5-4 now. A pair of two run jacks. The bartender keeping busy. And now Dylan Moore gets the M's ever closer. I did just mention this has got to be the time for them to strike because this is the time where the Red Sox bullpen is vulnerable. If you leave it here for Martin and Kenley Jansen, that might be closed down territory. And Dylan Moore, dead center field at 409, doesn't have to hit it very far. It's about 405, maybe even 400 center field, and Moore gets it over the fence. A couple of wall scrapers for the Mariners, but they'll take it. One in right by Hanniger, two-run variety. One in center for Dylan Moore, two-run variety. So Scott Service went with the pinch hitter, and the service was a two-run shot for Dylan Moore. Now it's 5-4. Ty France. He's batting eighth. They touched up Jolie Rodriguez already. And he will take a fastball down the right field line. Foul. 0-2 is the count. Strikeout and ground out. And the M's have this within a one-run game again. They've been close. But the Red Sox have been the team that have taken the lead. The Mariners have never led. This is off the end of the bat. This will be a tough stop at second base. But France doesn't run that well. This will be one up, one down. It's the two-run chance. For Dylan Moore is blasted across center field off Rodriguez. And the M's now only down a run. So, Isaac, I think you got your wish a little bit. Again, I talked in the YouTube side. I didn't think Mariners are a wild card team in 2024. Seven out of eight of you say yes. We do have one vote saying no. And, again, I also think that's understandable, too, because it was a little bit of a late end uh, falter after that such hard summer start where you had the really difficult division with the Astros and Rangers get in, but the M's didn't. 34 comeback wins last season for Seattle. As Rodriguez is going to meet with Trevor Story. Ducks and Kraken now tied at two on the right side for Seattle. That is a surprise. Kraken, you think that's an easy win, but don't think they got enough uh, runway to make the postseason we said on the hockey side, the Mariners, I do expect them to make it. This is the opening day broadcast. We're in the bottom seven. Rojas. Take a change of flow. Make it 1-0. Luis Rios now will be the new batter for Rojas. So we've used more and we've used Luis Rios. You'll notice him from the back arch that he has if you're watching along on the TV side and MLB TV or anything locally, he was required from the Red Sox on November 17, 2023. But he does a very interesting batting stance. I think it would hurt a little bit. Rios blasts one. He was way out in front of the changeup down the third baseline foul. If he kept that one fair, he might have had one chance to ride that down the left field line. Career high 150 games played with the Milwaukee Brewers in 2021. He's got a good bat in third base. That's what they envision him as a corner infielder. 1-2. Curveball misses badly. He's made starts at second, third, and short. That's what's profiling on Root Sports. So this will be Rios for Rojas. 85 off the plate. Connor Wong, an obligatory look. Same thing for the first baseman. Tristan Casas, as that one goes, foul. The M's have drawn within one. It's another two-run shot. Ryan Stanek, former Astro. That was a good pickup in the bullpen. He's getting warm in the bullpen. He can reach triple digits. Would be a good compliment to Andres Munoz. 
Swing and a miss. Good slider curveball mix there for Jolie Rodriguez. He thought there was three outs. <laughs> He's going to go back to the mound. He said, my bad. So, J.P. Crawford, as we get back to the top of the order, he got the punch out there. He was already walking back to the dugout. And the catcher, Connor Wong, said, yeah, man, we got one more. 79 inside on the curve as J.P. Crawford is 0 for 3, a foul out in the fifth. He's known for bat-to-ball skills, but not so much today. 77 inside to the lefty as well. Now, both those missed in quite a bit. Again, they showed the splits for JP 267, 266 between lefties and righties. RBIs 21 to 44 favor the righty side. He's going against another lefty today. Ball. As this is two balls and a strike, I guess that one just caught the bottom of the right portion of the box. Make it 2 1. Jolie delivers. This is a. Another change up right down the middle. Crawford does not swing. It was last season 19% strikeout rate, 14% walk rate. Julio Rodriguez wants a chance, at least before the eighth, the two outs in the bottom of the seventh. Mariners only down a run now, courtesy of the two run jam that just happened. There's a pinch hit from Dylan Moore. 2 2 pitch. Strike three called, and J.P. Crawford knew it. Takes it looking. The Mariners do score twice. Still one more pinch hit, two-run jack. We'll go to the eighth. Red Sox still up one. matchup, both starters going five to that like now. Yeah. You kind of look at that first time through, all these guys are limited, some of their pitch counts, and we mentioned them with Casillo, kind of sharp looking about a single. O'Neal going after the first pitch. Tyler O'Neal goes after the first pitch. He hits it out of the ballpark. It's right center field. Tyler O'Neal with an insurance run. As we just checked back in the action, top eight and now the Red Sox go back up by a pair. It's 6'4", 394 feet, five straight opening days with a home run for Tyler O'Neill, which is a Major League Baseball record. That is one hell of a stat. And it's a breaking ball that gets absolutely deposited. Cody Bolton gets sent, returned to center, right to right center field. And the Red Sox go back up by a pair. A little bit of fence post scoring here for Boston. They've scored in several innings, however, and that's done them well. J.P. Crawford. We'll get this one underneath the shortstop, but not before Tyler O'Neill does the damage, and we'll show that 
Bolton's going to deliver this curve, and it's going to get rocked right the right center field. And that is a big insurance run for the Boston Red Sox. Because now this can bring up Martin and bring up Kenley Jansen and really close it out. And again, the Mariners have had some fight back, but it's really two guys with two two-run shots. And courtesy of Mitch Haniger and Dylan Moore. That's been your offense. Offense has been sprinkled throughout for the Boston Red Sox and the latest one for Tyler O'Neill. So he's been hit by the back of his head of the pitch where he got a field of choice run scored. And then he's also had a home run. He's still on a base. He's walked. Um, Sedane Raffaella is a triple and six RBI and a run scored. He's at the dish right now. 2-1 is the count against Bolton. 14 pitches into his day. And who knows how big that insurance run is going to be. Set to deliver on an inside pitch right to Crawford. Doesn't have to throw it. He caught it clean for the out. And two outs now for the Red Sox. And their portion of the eighth with one run already home. It's now a 6-4 game. Seems like every time the Mariners get close, Boston finds a way to answer. And their offense has done very well today. Again, most of the damage has been done against Luis Castillo. Which can happen on an opening day side, but it was a far cry different from the game that Cooper Hopkins and I covered yesterday or last year with Shane Bieber and Luis Castillo in the opening day where he didn't even go for a run. 91. This one will be the left side of the box. Pablo Reyes is second at bat of the day. He was the pinch hit left for Emmanuel Valdez, who was pretty good. He's all for one with a strikeout. This will be fly out for Rafaela. I feel line and Hanninger is underneath it. No problem. But the Red Sox score a big run. Home run just as soon as we check back in. Tyler O'Neill makes it 6-4 as we go to the 2-3-4 part of the order. We'll see what the M's got in store. Again, I know Alvin Malvo is covering the uh, NCAA basketball tournament, but here are some hockey scores for you. Denver beats UMass 2-1 in double OT. Boston University takes out RIT 6-3. Maine loses to Cornell 3-1. And Minnesota Golden Gophers, they edge out Omaha. They come back in the third. They win 3-2. College basketball scores. He's got Illinois, Iowa State. That's a 66-62 game with a buck 32 in the second. Fighting Illini got the lead over the Cyclones. Alabama closes out North Carolina 89-87. UConn all over San Diego State Aztecs 82-52. And Arizona bows out to the Clemson Tigers. They lose 77-72. <laughs> so 
So this is the part of the order that we mentioned that the Mariners have to do damage with, and they have to contend against that back end of the bullpen there of Martin and uh, Kenley Jansen. And we'll see how good Chris Martin's going to be. Again, I mentioned his numbers. Don't know if I threw it across the broadcast, but I'll put this in there now. Here for the Red Sox, it's one of the best closers that they got in the league there. You got 51 and a third, 105 ERA, 103 whip, eight walks, 46 strikeouts, and a five-pitch mix. He is not to be trifled with right now. Julio Rodriguez is down against it, one and two. Mariners in their final six outs down a pair of runs. This ended up being a pretty good baseball game, but I've been more impressed with the Red Sox as far as their fence post scoring, meaning that every single inning they've just been able to do enough and push the pace to make sure that they can stay in front of the Mariners. 94, that splits the plate, and Julio doesn't offer. He got frozen by a 94 mile hour fastball from Chris Martin. And he's going to take a slow walk. And I don't think Julio is going to be very happy with himself. But no matter, he's going to have to take a seat. Again, 94, he went right after Julio Rodriguez and J-Rod was caught staring. So four pitches. And the Martins' day has already got a very dangerous Julio Rodriguez. And i got to contend with Jorge Polanco. One for two single hit by pitch and a warning track power. Right field hit. Polanco's had a very nice day. Good debut here for the M's. Again, as you mentioned, I think he's going to fit very well on that middle infield. He's going to play about 162 as long as he's healthy. 93 miles an hour, all tied up on the fastball. Goes way up out of the zone to reach for it. Make it 0-2 against Polanco. Again, Chris Martin said five picks mix that he features. He can be very devastating. 88 on the changeup. A lot of movement. That one misses low. Kraken have just taken a 3-2 lead over the Ducks. 6-10 left to go in the third. And I'm Root Sports Plus. Joining with you, I got the Root Sports feed for opening day for the Mariners in Boston. Big swing and a miss. Polanco a little late on the fastball. And Martin sends him packing as well. So it'll bring up Mitch Garber, who's kind of struggled here on this opening day side with his new team. Again, 87 games played. In the platoon with the Rangers, 270, 19 home runs, 50 RBI, 44 walks, 82 strikeouts. This will be time for a big hit for Garber. You're in the middle of the order for a reason. And Chris Martin, is uh, he's got the cutlery out, and he's uh, serving up some knives here with some beautiful pitches. 0-1 on the outside black. 92 on the fastball. What happens with the 0-2? This inside of the fastball toward the legs. And Garber will back away. 0 for 3 with a ground out in the 6. Chris Martin is as good as they come. And don't ask him for a just for men on their side of the gray beard because I'd have the same. When you're dominant like that, do whatever you want. 1 and 2 for the Wiley veteran. And another veteran there, Mitch Garber. He's up against it now, 1 and 2. Again, he's had a good average against the lefties, 344, not much against righties, but that's his power side, all 19 home runs. Change up low at 88. Swells the count to 2-2. Two and two. Mitch Garver against Chris Martin. He's batting cleanup. We'll see how long that will last. I know it's just one game. Garver, he hits it very hard. The left field line in the corner. Sliding and can't make the catch. Garver should be able to hustle in for a double as Duran will have that one slide in front of him. And he keeps it alive with two outs in the eighth. And we'll leave it up for Cal Raleigh, who's a very dangerous power hitter. He got a hanging cutter. And he just missed probably about 323 feet of the 331 down the left field line. As Cal Raleigh has an opportunity to make something happen with two outs. Garber adds second. He's just gotten a double as the Mariners are down a pair. Got four outs left with to work in this game, down two runs. As the crowd gets to their feet, whatever talking to that Martin needed there from Connor Wong, they got the signs for Cal Raleigh. And it's pretty simple for me. 
Don't leave a mistake pitch in the middle of the plate to a power hitter. It's really all you have to do if you got to be careful. You can mess around with Mitch Haniger, but Mitch Haniger has also been hot in this game. So you got to be extra cautious here with Cal Raleigh. And if you're Cal, you don't want to have your swing get too big. Base hit will work just fine. 91, this is up high. Make it 1-0 here for Cal. 1-3 for three with a single and a run scored. It's a two-run game in the bottom of the eighth. The Mariners down a couple runs. Mitch Garver at second with his first hit of the day. He's got a double. Cal Raleigh's going to try not to strand him. Chris Martin, jam shot, no problem here at second base. We get the easy toss over and no damage done. Double and no more. Boston down to their last at bats. If they can add to it, they can put Seattle in a big time hole. 6 4 going to the ninth. <clears throat> Sales event. Get 1.9% buying interest if you want before you get a little too many nice little boots until the 2023 comes on What's the greatest invention of all time? New hands-free sketcher slip-ins. You just slip in and they're on. It's like you have an invisible built-in shoe horn, so your foot slides in place without bending down or touching your shoes. Then the heel pillow technology keeps your foot comfy and secure. Hands-free sketcher slip-ins. For so many ways to bet on sports. It can be hard for those who struggle with gambling to reach their recovery goals. We can help. Call the Problem Gambling Helpline at 1 800 270 7117. As long as we don't get any changes here, it'll be Connor Wong, Duran, and Devers. 912 due up in the ninth as Boston has a 6 4 lead over Seattle. They're trying to get their win on opening day in uh, Dirty Water. Boston is uh, doing pretty good. They've had some good balanced scoring across the board. Two in the third, one in the fourth, one in the fifth, one in the sixth, and one in the eighth. Two two-run shots for Seattle, courtesy of Dylan Moore, Mitch Hanniger. Hanniger in the fourth, Moore in the seventh. Six runs, nine hits, no errors for Boston. Four runs, eight hits, one error. For Seattle. <clears throat> so let's go to the ninth. Austin Voth will be the new pitcher. I think the former O now with the M's against Connor Wong. Nine, one, and two do up. Boston, six runs, nine hits, no errors. Seattle, four runs, eight hits, one error. Boston, two runs in the third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one in the eighth, and then two two-run shots for Seattle, one for Hanniger, one for Moore in the fourth and the seventh, respectively. This Connor Wong checks when he fell on Voth on a 93-mile-an-hour fastball, make it 0-1. So they're going to go with Austin Voth of the University of Washington. Again, Cooper Hopkins, alma mater, the 31-year-old. 93, good swing for Connor Wong. And Julio Rodriguez, all he can do is play that right in front of him. So Connor Wong, now two for three with an RBI and a strike. And they love doing the swimming through water stuff. They're going to do a lot of that. And uh, they've been doing well. Ten hit attack and six runs. So Boston has been ready to swing the bat today. And Seattle's got eight runs too and a pair of two-run shots. But they've got to be able to find a way in the ninth. That's going to be hard to do against Kenley Jansen. Or, hey, they might stick with Chris Martin considering the way he pitched. So, Jaron Duran, one for four with a single, fifth, and a run score. So, Loft, we'll have to get this one done. 75 will miss way high. Not looking to be a curveball. Let's just listen to the ESPN box track. So, that's what I'll go with. Connor's got a Short lead at first, and he'll use one of his disengagements right here. One more left to get two per batter. But it's always pretty cool to see a guy that's a local product in the University of Washington playing with the local team for the Seattle Mariners. Yeah, this is a big time for him to get an extra run as Seattle is trailing by a pair. 
endeavors has been ridiculous in this game. So it's a very important bat right now. They didn't have to use Munoz in this game because Seattle was never in the lead. So we'll have to close this one. 2 and 0. 89. That one was a cutter. And it's 2 and 1. As Kinley starts to get warm for the Boston Red Sox. Again, it's really weird to say that team when you think about the Dodgers for so many years and then the Braves. I know he's more hittable now, but still the cutter is devastating. 89. For Dran, and this will be followed back down the right field line. It's been a well-played game on both sides, just one error across the board. Boston has had the luxury of some fence post scoring, as we've said, that kind of helped them keep the lead. That's where they are right now. Pitch clock down to four seconds is bought the livers, and Dram will see one more. 75 miles an hour on a curveball. Dram's had a good game. He's had some good speed as well. In Boston, I've been impressed with their showcase in this first game right now. Again, I can't believe that box score 16 to 1, Arizona all over Colorado. It's going to be a rough year for the Rockies, but you don't want to start your first game on the road getting slapped by losing by 15 runs right now. It just doesn't feel very good. Full count now. <clears throat> So Rafi Devers on deck. Full count here for Duran. Runner goes. And Wong wants to get back to first base. As Alex Cora was sitting on the hit and run. Not a bad idea. You want to stay out of that double play and then at least give you another opportunity for Devers to drive in a run. He's very good at it. Full count. As well, we'll get the signs. Here for Cal Raleigh. It's 10 pitches into his day. Again, he's coming on early for the ninth. We'll see if Connor Wong goes anywhere. This time he stays put. Ty France. Slow roller. They don't have time to get two, but they get the lead runner. So it'll be Durant first with Devers. Do up next. So I mentioned this several times at the broadcast, but how careful do you want to be with Rafi Devers? He's not single-handedly been the offense, but he's done a ton of damage right now. And Connor Wong was holding the back of his head to make sure he didn't get in the back, hit in the back of the head, like uh, it already happened with one of the Red Sox and Tyler O'Neill. Devers, and before that, turn and throw from both. A little drive. Duran back, two for four with a home run and a double for Rafi Devers. Boston trying to hold on. But they also want to add some more runs here. Devers is a good candidate to do so. Big swing and a miss on a curveball. 76. A 1-1 one -one is the count that was down toward the left foot. Again, he's affectionately called the baby face assassin from John Shiambi, who does the games for ESPN. And it's probably a good moniker for Devers because, boy, is he really good. And even in a down year, still gets 100 RBI. Still hitting 270 up toward the hands, and that will not have to move Julio too much, and two outs. So Red Sox will be down to their last at bat in the top nine. It'll be Trevor Story, who was a power hitter at his best. Again, you think about his numbers from 2021 with the Colorado Rockies, who is a guy that can hit about 35 home runs. Trevor Story over there with a walk today. <clears throat> Five seconds to go on the pitch clock, and Bop will use his disengagement on Duran. Got one more as he gets the throw back from Ty France. Should Story reach, it'll be Tristan Casas and then Tyler O'Neill. If they can get that far, two outs in top nine. Drawn under with the call. Boston up 6-4. 93 miles an hour down the right field line. We'll do it again. Trevor Story, 0-1 to count with his fourth at bat. Mariners trying to keep the score line right where it is. They're down two. It's a 6-4 score line. Both. It's a sign from Raleigh. We'll deliver a curveball just at 84, maybe even a cutter. 
have one and one. I'll pull this up on the ESPN side of the tracker. Just to get it, they'll deliver it as a sweeper no matter. Super cutter, kind of the same deal. 1-1. One, one. It's pitch clock down to four. Both the livers and the cutter will miss outside. Make it 2-1 and one here. Both. Fans don't like it, but it's been the right call, and I think it's been pretty consistent. If it's been about three or four feet outside the zone, it's usually called to strike that one a little bit farther out. And this one will be offered out by Trevor Story. That was a cutter at 90. Make it 2-2. And we'll see if the runners will be off with the pitch or if we'll try to get a ball in the dirt or something like that for Duran to run because he runs well. Again, they mentioned 24 out of 26 stolen base marker last year. 2-2. Two -two. As Story will get set to dig back in against both. We'll see what Volt will do here as this one is way outside. Snap throw. Safe. They're going to save Duran. Beat it before Polanco's tag. That was a curveball snap. It was going to be tough for Raleigh to get it toward the left side of the glove hand. But I thought his transfer was pretty good considering where the pitch was located. But Duran was going, so he's already one for one on the stolen base. That was tough for Raleigh and Polanco nonetheless, but a great steal and a good eye. He had a good pitch to run on, and Duran didn't mess around. <clears throat> Full count now for Trevor Story, so you really can do whatever you want here if you don't want to deal with him, but you got Tristan Casas on deck. This is hit to third base. No problem. And they're going to say Trevor Story he says, hey, I beat it. He wants to look at it. I think the Mariners are going to get this south call, but we'll see if the Red Sox will challenge it. <clears throat> so Luis Arias thought he was going to tag the runner. Story does run well, and when Arias throws it over, looks like the ball was in the glove with the tag on the first look. Let's take a look. Did he get his foot on there? That's a bang, bang call. And whatever the initial ruling is to me, I think it's going to be hard to overturn. I think it's going to be bang, bang. And the Red Sox do have a chance here to maybe get this. I would say if I have to guess, 70-30 that he's out. This isn't the easiest call for them to make. To the naked eye, it looked like the Mariners might have had it. But the indecisiveness, if this goes the other way for Luis Arias, will be something that makes the uh, Mariners pay. Because if he would have thrown it right away, there would have been no question. We would have went to the bottom of the ninth. But Trevor Story runs well. And that really is bang, bang. I do think the call is going to stand. But I'm about 70-30 stand. That's very, very close. It's about as soon as the ball gets in the back of the glove and the foot meets the bag. It really doesn't get any closer than that. Call on the field field is overturned. So that hesitation for Luis Arias is going to allow Trevor Story to get first base. I mean, that really is the only other way to say it. Story runs very well. He was a little indecisive about whether he wanted to tag that runner a third, and it gave Trevor Story just enough to beat it out by, I wouldn't even say a half of a step, I think a quarter of a step on that. So that was very, very close bang, bang. And the Red Sox... We'll get the win the challenge. They'll get to keep their time out. And now it's an opportunity for Tristan Casas to really do some damage and try to put this game out of reach. I know it's only a two-run lead, but this is a big-time run here. Uh, the Boston Red Sox have a chance to unlock with that safe call. Good pitch for Bob. So 82 on a sinker. 
at 01. Maybe going to change up a little bit of a cutter mix. Let's we'll see what ESPN wants to call it. They've been the kid in the sweeper. That's a strike looking. 01, bottom left corner. It's going to throw over. We'll check on story. Not a bad idea. We said he runs very well. Want to make sure you try to stay in front of that. As Tristan Costas will get set to dig back in. His numbers with runners in scoring position, 211, 12 and 57, a home run in 16 RBI. 77 just outside. That was with the curveball. Two and nine with runners in scoring position in this game. Three of ten would be very, very big right now. And that could get the job done. I think for as close as that curveball is, Bob probably goes back and throws another one. This one way low in the dirt. And Trevor Story is going to be able to take second base on the defensive indifference, but no chance for Cal Raleigh and nonetheless. And both now 21 pitches into his day. And he's in trouble here. 2-1 the count. Tristan Casas is batting Tyler O'Neill's on deck, and he's been good today. Pitch clock down two. Good pitch inside on the cutter. 2-2. Two, two. Velocity not the big point here for Voth. 82 miles an hour, but the placement and location, that's what matters here. Crowd start to get to their feet. Voth needs a punch out and needs an out in the worst way here. Try to strand those runners at second and third. 2-2. Two, two. Casas. Try to dig back in here, see if they can get out of the jam. A gigantic lead at third base. As this is a curveball, just foul down the right field line. Hit off the netting. That's why you have that over there with the fans. So I'm not sure what WRC is plus, but 129, 100 average for Major League Baseball. So Logan Gilbert, they're talking about him. He's going to be one of the starters there as well. Big swing and a miss. Voth got it on the sweeper. He punches out Casas. And now we go to the bottom nine. Mariners need a couple runs to send it to extras. Maybe more to win it. We'll see what they got. And we'll go to the bottom nine. Going on nonsense. We'll go to the bottom nine here as the M's are down a couple runs. I was supposed to have Cooper Hopkins with me. Couldn't join him today with a little bit of work. We'll give you some updated score. I'm sure the game went final here for Alec Nava. He was covering Illinois and Iowa State, providing a line I get past the Cyclones. They went 72 to 69. So Big Ten teams going to go to the Elite Eight. I was telling some teams not to. Pick our tongues people not to pick Big Ten teams, but Illinois was a good one. UConn with a gigantic 182 52. Clemson survives the Arizona Wildcats. Tigers win 77 72. And the Crimson Tide, that was a uh, nosebleeder there. Alabama wins 89 87 against the Tar Heels and North Carolina and Hubert Davis's team. They're out after making the Sweet 16. Depending on how I feel tomorrow, I'm kind of battling a slight cold and all that, but we're trying to get through this uh, nine innings here. We'll get to the game story shortly. I was going to cover Gonzaga and Purdue, but we'll see how that goes. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it, but Monday, Tuesday, I'll be here on the Twitter space and YouTube side. I'm going to get those assignments squared away. And then Friday, Saturday, i got to go on a sign with the Waterford Sharks locally as they'll make the playoffs in the Michigan Independence Hockey League. And uh, that'll be Friday, Saturday for me. So I'll be on assignment at the rink. But Monday, Tuesday, I'll be back. <clears throat> so we'll get into the play-by-play -play as we are in the bottom nine. So former Dodger and uh, former Atlanta Brave, Kenley Jansen, now the closer over the last couple of seasons for the Boston Red Sox. He still features that cutter, that two-seam, that slider. And uh, he's going to look to get the job done for Kenley. A little more hitter 
friendly than usual, but still, you would expect him to get the job done with the two-run lead. They're going to have to get out one of the hottest Mariners in this game in a return for Mitch Hanniger. Number 74 is what Kenley Jansen rocks as he delivers the wiggle and then the pitch. Cutter at 91, and that is right on the inside black. 51 games played, 363 ERA, 237 opponents averaging 29 saves. He's normally a guy at his best in his heyday at 40-45. This is a fastball toward the face of the two seam. And Hanniger offered at it. So Jansen already had in the hitters count 0-2. Two-run home run, a single, and two runs scored for Mitch. He's going to have to get past Kenley Jansen, though, trying to hold on to this two-run save. 0-2 pitch. Did he offer at the cutter? They say no on the first baseline. Make it 1-2 against Mitch Hanniger. Again, Dylan Moore. He hit the two-run shot for the Dom Canzone pool. He'll be next. That's what Scott Service went with. And then Ty France. Hanniger, curveball high. Oh, the cutter high, I should say. 2-2 two, two at 86. Hanniger again, 2-3. for three. Jansen did five pitches into his day, trying to get the two-run save. He is starting in the bottom of the ninth. Clean inning. Oh, that's up towards Hanniger's face. And he gets out of the way. Make the count full. That one was awfully close. That was at 93, and it got away. And Hanniger just able to move out of the way as it buzzed the tower. We'll see if that wakes up anything in Mitch, but he's already been woken up in this game. See what Canley will do here to optimize that last pitch and get in the strike zone. Full count pitch is on its way. It's clocks down to three. Jansen delivers a ball, and Mitch Hanniger continues his very strong game. And now this leaves it up to Dylan Moore. He's already got one two-run jack. Mitch Hanniger has already had one that opened the scoring. And would this be something if Dylan Moore can tie this game? He's got some power. you got Ty France due up next nonetheless. And then Luis Rios. So Dylan Moore with one for one, two-run shot in the seventh pitch hitting for Dom Canzone. Big swing and a miss. On a two-seam fastball at 93 miles an hour that was right in the happy zone, power on power, and Moore missed it. Make it 0-1. Hanniger, cautious lead at first off the walk. No outs. 93. Perfect pitch for Jansen. Cutter just on the outside black. Probably graced his stitching there. Make it 0-2. Jansen about to throw pitch number nine. He's working very quickly here, but he'll take a soft toss over to Hanniger and use the first of two disengagements as Casas will give him back the baseball. As I've said throughout this broadcast, I've been very impressed with Boston in the fence post scoring. Done very well throughout this game. Try to push the distance away from the Mariners. Dylan Moore. Fastball up high. Make it 2-2 two and two now. One for one against Kenley Jansen in his career, so a very small sample size, if you believe in the superstition. That's what the Mariners fans want. They want to celebrate at T-Mobile Park. John Andre with them on the call. Fastball blows him away high. That would have been a ball, but Jansen offers at it. And more offers at it. Jansen delivers it, I should say. And it is an out, as it is left at first for Mitch Hanniger. And he tied it, but it was just above the bat head. And Jansen able to get a key out. Ty France, the first baseman for the Mariners today, does not want to hit into a double play, but he's a candidate for it, does not run well. 0 for 3 with a ground out in the seventh. And the low cutter, France was wise to lay off of it as it was toward the back foot. 1-0. 11 pitches into Jansen's day, trying to close it out. The two-run lead. It's a 6-4 lead for the Red Sox, trying to get a win on opening day. Three more games in hand. As this is toward right field, and this will be caught. So one more out left for the Seattle Mariners to work with. 
and I'll make sure that I go ahead and give you that out call to see who was in right field. And Kenley Jansen is going to pitch to Luke Rayley as France line out to right. I should pull back up on the side of the notes. Excuse me, I'm all over the place. Teller O'Neill. He was the one that hit one of the home runs off the previous. He got the counter corner to right field. So this will be Rayleigh, who will be the last batter. As I believe Scott Service is his third pinch hitter, so he's running out of bats here. 249, 19 home runs, 49 RBI with Tampa on 824 OPS. He's the Mariners' last hope today. This is Joe and I are with you on the solo call, win, lose, or draw here. Hope you enjoyed the solo call today. And I know Cooper Hopkins did message me. If we get a chance to do some more baseball games, so let's keep in touch. We'll definitely cover the M's. I'm down to do so. Maybe I'll make him cover the Tigers at some point. Who knows? So Luke Rayleigh, the last hope. Kenley Jansen going to try to get this one done. Luis Arias was already used. It's righty on righty. And Rayleigh has got some home run pop. It's 94, low in the zone, right at the knees. 0-1. Two strikes left to get. If you're going to get the punch out or anything else, just one more out to get, and the Red Sox take this one on the road. 29 of 33 save opportunities. This is a beautiful pitch in toward the hands. And the Mariners down on their final strike. Kimley Jansen, all gas, no breaks right now. He's all business. All for two. And we'll see if we'll get a timeout called here. Kimley Jansen going to take an extra breath. 89 hits last season for Rayleigh. Needs one now. 0-2. Jansen Rocks gets set to deliver. Pitch is outside and swung, and Kenley Jansen gets the one on opening day for the Boston Red Sox as they swing through a two-seamer, and the Red Sox take this one 6-4. So this was a fantastic contest. Boston takes it on the road. They got three more games this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday side. There will be no days off for these two squads. Red Sox take the road opener. They win at 6-4, and I will talk to you guys soon. Peace out, everybody. You have a good night. Thank you, Nonsense, for jumping in. Uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to check back in with you soon. You have a good night. You guys have a good one. I'll talk to you soon. Red Sox win this one by a score of six to four. You know that feeling of having to rewatch sessions that didn't get finished.